Welcome back to the Nail Academy. I hope you all enjoyed your break, but sadly it's time to get back to work. Before break, we went over the basics of artificial nails, and I hope you at least remembered, but if not, this review will hopefully rejog your memory. First, we're going to prep our station when talking about uh, how to ready the natural nail for any application. Then we'll file into the basics and necessities of acrylic nails. Then we will shape our knowledge on gel nails and finally clean away the residue and dust while talking about polygel, the future of artificial nails. Now let's get into the prep. When talking about prep, uh, according to nail nails, there's a couple steps you must do. First, you need to clean all of the existing polish off the nail. Then you need to file the free edge, the tip of your nail, and the nail plate to give it a nice buff and adhere better to whatever product you chose. Then, depending on if you're using forms or tips, you have to choose the correct size for in each individual nail, and that includes all 10, it takes a while. Then you have to shape the nail to the desired shape, and then you have to cut the link to what the client wants. After that, you have to get your primer and your dehydrator. These two are very essential to the prepping stage. If you don't use primer or dehydrator, the uh, product you use won't stick, and your client can be washing the dishes, hit their nail on the table or the counter, and it will just fly right off. And they just paid $25 to $30 for nine nails. That's a ripoff. Now, I understand that takes a long time, but it's worth it in the end. Now, let's file into the basics and necessities of acrylic nails. With acrylic nails, they're known for their stinky smell. When you walk into a nail salon, you're hit with that very strong chemical smell. That is the monomer. And according to FabHow, it's very essential to the application with the other items. Some of the items includes the monomer, the stinky stuff, the powder, a, a file, a paper towel, a brush, a glass dish, or a bowl if you don't have a glass dish, like a shot glass, and then you need a toothpick to clean around the cuticles. Now, the monomer and the powder, like I said, are very essential. If you don't have these, you aren't having acrylic nails. And the uh, powder, is the reactor to the monomer. When they combine it, they create a bead. Now there's three different types of beads. There's a too wet bead, a perfect bead, and a too dry bead. The perfect bead is obviously the one you want to have, but a wet bead is when you have too much monomer to too, much, too little amount of powder. It's kind of wonky. A perfect bead has the right amount of monomer and the right amount of powder, and it, will, it can go in any three of the zones. Uh, and then a too dry bead is you have too little of both, and it will be really hard to apply to the natural nail off the brush, and it's just very difficult to work with. Now, like I said, the perfect bead can go in any three of the zones. Zone one is the free edge, the tip of your nail, like I said before. Zone two is your nail plate. Zone three is your cuticle area, and this is called the three ball method. Uh, nail salons like to use the one ball method where they have a gigantic perfect ball, for speed and time because they want to get you in and out as fast as possible. But I think the third three ball method is the best because it gives you the right apex and strength that you need. Now once that's cured, it can take 12 hours within the actual nail itself. But once you hear the clicking sound like that, you know it's ready to go. But it does take some time and it does smell, but you do have the strength of it. It's just not flexible. So if you hit your nail or if you have a job that requires picking up boxes, there's a good chance your nail is going to break and you're going to bleed, and that's kind of unfortunate. Now let's shape our knowledge on gel nails, okay? So gel nails are known for how easy they can be, but how hard it is to master. You can do anything, say it's easy, but to master it, it's the real skill. And there's a couple things you need. According to nail splash, you need to have different types of gels, especially two. You need to have different viscosities. There's two different types, like I said before. On the three top rows of the picture, you have very thick container, thick gels in the container. This is your builder gel. This helps you build up your structure, the apex, and the strength of the nail. Now, the lower bottom line 
is the thinnest viscosity. This is what you use to shape the nail if you're using a form. It gives you a map, so to speak. Now, you do need a brush, you need this, you need a UV light or an LED light, and this is how you cure the gel. If you don't have these, you're not going to have a solid nail. You're going to have a very wet nail, and it's just going to get messy. Now, like I said, depending on which one you prefer, you can have LED lights, nail, not nail, the UV light, and depending on the client's desired length and shape and thickness, because you can get a very thick nail, they're called like bubble gum nails, they're weird, um, you, it takes longer. It can take from 30 seconds to a minute and 30. It just depends on the voltage and the amount you used. Now, after that, you need to have a residue sticky layer remover. This gets rid of the very sticky layer that can stick to your shirt or other items. And then if you want to continue with the de a design, like adding more gel to it, to like add a flower, or if you want to paint a color, this is the time to do so. Now that we've shaped our knowledge on gels, let's talk, let's, yeah, let's uh, remove the residue and powder of the nail and talk about polygel, the future of artificial nails. Oh, yeah, it's flexible. Uh, polygels are the best of both worlds. You have the best of acrylics and gels, and you leave behind the worst of both. With acrylics, you get their strength, but you leave behind the stinky monomer. With gels, you get their flexibility, their unlimited time that you use to move the product around. You get also a little bit of strength, but mostly that's flexibility. And then you also get a thing called slip. It's like monomer, but it doesn't stink. It's like a floral smell. So it's very pleasant, and you don't get a headache from it. It's very easy to use. Now, with polygel, you have different kits. This is the master kit. You have dehydrator, a pH blender, a primer, a gel top coat, four different types of polygel colors, ranging from pink, cover pink, clear to white. And then you have your slip, like I said, is like the monomer. You it's very easy to use. There's only four steps you need. You need your palette knife and brush, of course, and you squeeze the tube, and then you get your product, you scrape it off, and then you have to put it onto the natural nail and then start to form. Now, unlike gel, it's self, gel is self-balancing. Polygel isn't. It will stay right where you put it, and it will just stick to anything that comes in contact with it. So you must use the slip to move it around where you like. And after you get to that point, it's super easy to control it. You don't have to worry about ratios of powder to monomer. It's just polygel and slip. Polygel will always be very thick, unlike gel that has different types. Now, the same with gel, you have to cure it in an LED lamp or a UV lamp. And that does take time. And then afterwards, you have to use a sticky layer remover, just like gel. And then if you're going to continue with your design, you continue, you add a color, and then you add your gel top coat, and then you're done. Now let's recap. We talked about how to prep our natural nails for any form of application. We talked about, we filed into the basics and necessities of acrylic nails. Then we shaped our knowledge on gel nails, and finally, we cleaned away the residue and uh, dust while talking about polygel. Now I hope you all learned something or this jogged your memory, because we have an exam tomorrow. So have fun. Thank <laughs> you.